What's up guys? I'm back with the successor to last year's SK10 soundbar. We've got the SL10 soundbar. The biggest difference between the two, which only took a couple years to get, is the inclusion of DTSX support. Yeah, we finally get DTSX. Sony, you might be in trouble. Now before we kick off the video, we'd like to send a thanks to the folks over at Value Electronics for helping us secure this soundbar for review. Thanks Robert. And guys, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up with what's new in the audio and video world, then consider subscribing for new weekly videos. All right. Let's get this thing unboxed. The SL10 retails for $1,300 and is a 5.1.2 soundbar. Inside, we get the remote control, two wall mounts, the subwoofer power cable. Here we have the manuals, plus an optical cable and some batteries. The SL10 is a long soundbar coming in at 56.8 inches wide, so it should look right at home with a 65 inch television. Taking a look at the top of the soundbar, we have touch sensitive keys for power, input selection, volume up and down, play pause, microphone mute, and the Google Assistant button, which we'll set up in a little bit. Up top are the height enabled speakers, which will reflect sound off of your ceiling and back at your seating area. There are three speakers up front, two on the ends, and two up top, all rated at 50 watts each. This makes up 5.1.2 channels. Around back, we have a USB input, optical in, an HDMI ARC, and two additional HDMI inputs. Let's take a look at the subwoofer. It's rated at 220 watts, comes in at 8.7 inches wide, by 15.4 inches high, by 12.3 inches deep, and it weighs 17.2 pounds. Around back, you'll see that the subwoofer is a ported design, which will give you that extra low end rumble. Only thing we have back here is the power input and a manual pairing button. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up to the TV. If your TV has an HDMI ARC connection, make sure you plug one end into the TV and the other end into the ARC on the soundbar. I will be using an Apple TV 4K, so that'll go into the HDMI one spot. Plug in the subwoofer and it should pair automatically with the soundbar. Once you power it on, you will be prompted to open up the Google Home app and set up the Google Assistant. This is an optional step, so you can skip this if you don't want to use the Google Voice Assistant. Once you open the Google Home app, you'll see up top it says set up one device. If you're already set up with Google, just click next or click set up new home. When it finds the LG soundbar, click on it, then click next. When you hear the sound, click again. You can opt to send information about the soundbar to Google or not. I chose no thanks. Next, pick the room the bar is in and then give it a name. Connect to your Wi-Fi network and you're good to go. Now you can use your voice to talk to it. Okay, Google, what time is it? 12.39. So the first demo we're gonna play is from the 2019 DTS-X demo disc. Left front, right front, center, left side surround, right side surround, left rear, right rear, left front height, right front height. Now we're going to throw in the Dolby Atmos demo disc.
been listening to where cinematic audio has been. Because we are so used to hearing sound this way, we don't notice that it is merely a fraction of what its potential could be. But what if sound could be extraordinary again? Okay, so how does this perform for immersive audio? Just as a reference point, I do have a full 11.2.4 dedicated home theater room, so I know exactly how these demos should sound. And coming from last year's model, I did notice a slight increase in the overhead effect. The Atmos helicopter demo did semi-convincingly throw the helicopter sound up top, which would typically be the front high channels. There was a little bit of left and right panning up there, so if I remember correctly from the older model, this one did sound a bit better. The channel callouts for the DTS-X demo worked fine for the front three channels, but of course the side and rear surrounds did nothing. It just sounded like it was coming from the soundbar. The overhead callouts sounded all right, and it did sound like they were coming from above. As far as movie watching, again, there was some decent overhead effects that can sound like it's coming from top middle of the room, but I never got the sensation anything was coming from behind me. Although if you want to add the optional SPK-8S wireless rear speakers, then you'll get a fuller surround sound experience. So I would say if you do have the room to fit these wireless surrounds, I definitely do so. Now for sound staging, you do get a large upfront image and you can get some distinct sound placement with well-mixed soundtracks. Other times it can be somewhat muddled. And what I mean by that is let's say that a car is moving from left to right. Well, it would just sound like it's coming from straight in front of you rather than sounding like it's moving. And this is just one of the drawbacks of fitting a half dozen speakers in one little box is that sound localization can sometimes get lost, but that's one of the compromises that you make if you want to save space for going with a soundbar. Now for dialogue, which is one of the main reasons for getting a soundbar, is the SL10 does indeed have a dedicated center channel, which is adjustable using the remote control. So you can raise it or you can lower it if you're having a hard time hearing people talk. Dialogue for the most part sounded good, but I did notice if I was watching an action movie with a lot going on, then center channel will sound like it's getting drowned out by the other speakers. So if someone is talking and action picks up, then the center channel can sound like it's getting lower. Therefore, you may find yourself adjusting that center channel often when the action picks up. If you're watching a drama or the news or a comedy or something that's dialogue driven, then you shouldn't have an issue. Now, as far as bass response, this subwoofer will fill your room with some big booming bass. It's a must have with the soundbar because if the soundbar loses connection, then you'll notice how thin sounding the bar is without it. It is also wireless, so you can place this anywhere in your room. Like I always say about these soundbar subwoofers is that they're not the most articulate and fast sounding. They're mostly boomy and very loud. So explosions and pop music will have some very good impact. If you're not a discerning audiophile, I don't think you'll be upset with the subwoofer. Now the other feature that you get, like last year's model, is Meridian Audio Processing. You also get support for high resolution music playback up to 24-bit 192K. I did mention earlier that this does have Google Assistant and Chromecast Audio built in, and it's got Bluetooth of course. It'll pass through 4K HDR and Dolby Vision, but keep in mind, at least at the time of this video, if you're using the Apple TV 4K plugged into the soundbar, it won't pass Dolby Vision. It works fine with 4K Blu-ray players, but just not with the Apple TV for some reason you're just gonna end up getting standard HDR. All right, so the question is, should you pick this up if you have last year's SK-10? Well, if you don't need DTSX support, then I don't think this model is that much of an upgrade. But if you need to watch the latest Jurassic Park in DTSX and wanna stay as future-proof as possible, then I think you'll be satisfied with the performance that you get from this soundbar. Now, I know I mentioned some issues that I had when I was using this, and I only bring that up because I'm using a full surround sound setup as reference. But if you're comparing this to other soundbars out there, then I think this is near the top for the performance that you can get from it. And if you add in those rear speakers, then the SL10 becomes pretty tough to beat. It's got good overhead performance for Atmos and DTS-X mixes. And if you wanted to tell you the weather, you can do that too. If you're tight for space and you wanna maximize your Netflix and 4K movie watching experience, then I think the SL10 might be something you should consider. Now, if you guys are interested in picking the soundbar up or getting a personal demo, I'll leave the address and a link to Value Electronics down below. Make sure you ask for Robert and tell him that we sent you, and you'll get 50% off. I'm just kidding. You're not going to get 50% off. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. 
Let us know if you'll be grabbing this soundbar or do you prefer separate speakers. Follow us on social media. And if you wanna get exclusive content and giveaways, then check out our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.